a passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not having fun doing it, you're gonna give up. Welcome to another episode of John's Entitled Podcast, a partner of MoshPitNation.com. This week's guest is Nikki from Necrogoblicon, and with me as always now is Daniel Terry from Discography Discussion. How are you doing this week? Oh man, I am doing good. I'm trying to stay awake and alive after being worked into the ground. <laughs> Working for the man. Every night and day. Speaking of... Uh... Well, that's not really a great segue, but I don't really give a fuck because this is just kind of a fun episode all the way around from the interview with Nikki to, I think, uh, everything that we're going to talk about because we got some funny funny things on deck. And uh, what was kind of fun, taking away the NY, not New York, uh, was actually the blabbermouth and PRP love we got for our episode with Lejean Witherspoon. Yeah, man. I guess we're become media darlings. I guess I can uh, buy that private jet I've always wanted to now. Yeah, I mean, only half of it. Because the other half's right, mine. Right. Uh, we can go in on a timeshare. We pay. Oh yeah, that's honestly that's the next step in any relationship. Is a timeshare <laughs> for sure, or buying a plane? <laughs> timeshare. No, I thought it was really cool that that stuff got uh, got posted on there. I like I said, I love reading the comments on that stuff. And uh, who do you think it's going to be? That was that was my favorite. That was my favorite. Is who people thought it was going to be, and that's something I don't think even I thought to to kind of delve into. Who do you think it's going to be that he's talking about? I don't know. Like one guy's like, it's got to be Corey Taylor, right? But I was like, I don't necessarily think that Corey Taylor is, um, I don't know. I don't think he's different enough. Like it's not that him and Lashawn are like the same or anything, but like I feel like they have very similar styles at times, right? So I don't, I don't see that. Like, how, what's Corey Taylor going to bring to the table that Lashawn couldn't bring doing his own music? And you know, maybe that's a dumb question, but. Um, I think it'd be interesting if it's somebody that is, um, like, somebody you wouldn't expect, like a pop artist or, like, you know, like a pop rock artist. Well, he did say it was someone in a big rock rock band. And then I, I just went, like, for the grandiose, and I was like, oh, it's Dave Grohl. <laughs> yeah, that honestly, that would be really cool. Yeah. Having Dave Grohl on it, um, just because I'm a huge, huge Dave Grohl fan, and I, that would be that would be a dream come true. Uh I definitely wanted to talk about the the really bad review that we talk about in the interview because you you said uh, you wanted to pull it up because you hadn't read it. Yeah, I hadn't read it, and so I was like, "Is this really somebody that just doesn't get the joke, or oh, yeah. <laughs> what is the deal here?" You know, so not that I, I don't really think that the band is a joke musically, but there's definitely a, an air of humor, a fun, you know, in what they do. Yeah, this is the first time I'm hearing this, so you know. Am I reading it to you, or do you want to read it? Uh, I'm having trouble finding it on their Facebook page. Well, I have, I have it here. pulled up right here. All right. Then you are the man with the mic. All right. It's a little bit sure. of a lengthy lengthy thing, so um, forgive me. Okay. I got you. There's nothing inherently wrong with mixing music and comedy, but it has to be done in a particular way to properly work. It helps if a band can be genuinely funny, like The Hell, or argument their humor augment their humor with noticeable musical chops like Avatar, but even just framing themselves as a blatant, <laughs> as a blatant parody a la Steel Panther or Ninja Sex Party at least has appeal. For Necrogoblicon, on the other hand, there's no appeal to speak of. Take away their shtick of a guy in a rubber goblin mask running around with them on stage, and they'd easily be among the most stupid, horrifically bland death metal bands in existence. And yet, there is a period, namely when any band with a gimmick clogged up every media outfit imaginable, where that was positioned as enough. And with the ironic perfect scores and col column inches that could and should have been offered to far more deserving deserving acts, the putrid stench of, netro of netro Necrogoblicon was embedded within modern rock. Hell, even by covering them now, it's perpetuating the idea that a surefire way to get attention is through stupid gimmicks to augment a lack of their talent or imagination. There is a point to this, though. Directed at both listeners and bands who think Necrogoblicon is worthy is a worthy way to spend time. 
for listeners, this is a band who play infinitesimally insignificant role in a genre with hundreds, if not thousands, of better options. For bands who may believe that emulating their quote-unquote success is a way to get noticed, here's some advice. Don't. <laughs> because really... What wow. is really what is there that's that's here to become some enamored? What is there that's here to become? I think that's supposed to be so enamored by a beyond basic death metal album produced in a way that crushes it into translucent fragments, topped off by a vocalist who sounds like he guzzles acid for fun. Yeah, that's appealing. But what's worse is they <laughs> they're better. They're but what's worse is they're. Okay, this dude also uses hor- like the wrong thing. He put there T H E Y R D instead of T H E R D, so that's what threw me off. The more standard metal, sorry, but what's worse is there the better moments. There are better moments here. The more standard metal of mold and dressed as goblins, maybe cut to ribbons while no body will. Cut to ribbons. God, God, this guy sucks. Dressed as goblins, maybe cut to ribbons while no body. What's with no body whatsoever. But they might as well be opuses compared to the trans influence on dragons that genuinely sounds like an, a MIDI recording. The blaring chip tune of the magic spider, which borders so close to being totally unlistenable, or the hair pulling obnoxiousness of the many faces of Dr. Hubert Malbec's circus music. <laughs> And for a band who are so clearly trying to shove themselves in listener space by any means necessary, it's not even memorable, even in a mimetic way. Dressed as goblins may verge on that given how the titular line is repeated ad nauseum, but really the only thing that's unfortunately stick... That, is, that, that Oh, sorry. But really the only thing that'll stick, unfortunately, is Nicholas Von Doom's vocals and the sound of his profuse, uncontrollable vomiting with every syllable. <laughs> Oh my God. All that is probably convincing enough to not touch this album with a 10-foot pole. But if not, perhaps the lyrics, which are just as pointless and asinine as everything else, will do the job. And they are just as throwaway, ranging from fantasy imagery with as little musical craft as putting a Dungeon Dragons manual to music on the magic spider and goblins to what can only be described as a warp take on Margaret Wise Brown's children's book, Good Night Moon and Thanks for Nothing Moon. Or on Thanks for Nothing Moon, sorry. There's nothing close to depth or intelligence, and with the slimy film of forced humor that oozes literally everything over literally everything here, it can be genuinely hard to stomach at points. But the most infuriating thing about Welcome to Bonkers, and indeed Necrocoblagon as a whole, stems deeper than that, circling back to the floods of unwarranted promotion that was once given to them. <laughs> That's where they stand when it comes to the representation of metal as a whole. At long last, metal finally seems to be gaining a positive public presence and shaking off the stigma of being exclusively for weirdos and fantasy nerds. But with an album like this, Necrogoblicon, Necrogoblicon are actively dredging up those old stereotypes purely for themselves to stay relevant. They get the promotion they want, reach a point where they become enough of a force to get wider recognition, and the paradigm shift back to how it once ships back to how it once was, leaving the uphill battle to start all over again. And this isn't an issue exclusively linked to Necrogoblicon. You could make the exact argument for bands like Ailstorm or Guar, who will be on next week's podcast. Guar, that is. But they've never had that sort of push that this band have, nor do they have as little that's actually noteworthy. <laughs> Sure, there's a goblin. Oh my hype. god! Sure, there's a goblin hype man at live shows, but move that aside for recorded output, and everything comes falling apart at the seams. And truly, when it does fall apart, what's left in its wake is a cal- calamitous waste of time that isn't even worth digging through to find some redeeming qualities. Even aside from how infuriatingly gimmick-ridden and potentially harmful it is, it's about as shoddy and amateurish as you can expect from death metal, with terrible production, worse lyrics, and a foetid air. I might be saying that word wrong. Uh, air of a band who know how skull boringly dumb they are and that they'll get away with it all the same. Welcome to Bonkers is that rare shit show of a release that can't get a single thing right and where it'll be a totally commendable achievement if a worse album is released this year. Actually, to call this an album might be giving Necrogoblagon too much credence. More than anything, this is just an insult. One out of ten. For fans of Psycho Stick Death Clock Troll Fest. And that was written by Luke Nuttall. A great fucking name for a dude who can't get the joke. Wow, um, it makes uh, it makes some of the stuff I said about In Flames sound downright praiseworthy. Um, <laughs> man, I thought I was the biggest jerk music reviewer <laughs> online, but um, 
Wow. I mean, first of all, huge inflated sense of self-importance. Like, I mean, some of the word usage was... Um, I can't even think of a big word for it, so I'm just going <laughs> to say uh, the word usage was a little self-indulgent. I think you <laughs> got places. paid by the word for that review. Absolutely, and it'll probably get tons of... It's funny to me, and like it, it almost, it's, it's almost a little meta, no pun intended, that, you know, basically he's saying that, you know, though they're being shocking and trying to be funny in order to get instant popularity, but it's like, dude, isn't that what you're doing with your review? Like, I mean... You know, if you listen to death metal, you listen to deathcore, you listen to whatever whatever genre you think it is that Necrogoblicon plays. You know, like they are clearly proficient musicians at what they do. You know, they they put out fun records with fun lyrics. You know, with some pretty you know uh, ball busting metal. And I you know I like the way it sounds, and I, I have no issue with it. And I listen to thousands of bands. You know, <laughs> like every year. You know. So, like, I've heard really, really horrible albums before, and I can't really look at any of their stuff and say that, you know, like, oh, this is objectively bad. <laughs> you know, and, like, honestly, like, the the humor, maybe it does enhance it a little bit. You know, like, I might have been a little bit more harsh on the band if they didn't have that aspect of it. And I'd be like, well, they're another death metal band, and they're pretty good. You know, but the, to the length that this guy goes to try to destroy them musically... It doesn't. It doesn't really connect. I kind of feel like this guy just you know, somebody must have pulled a really bad Halloween prank on him one time, blasting a Necrogoblin song, and now he's <laughs> jaded for like I'm going to go online and I'm going to destroy them. You know, he needs to just kind of kind of loosen up a little bit. You know, maybe go have some drinks or something. Speaking of having drinks and loosening up, how about we get into my chat with Nikki from Necrogoblin, and we'll be back to talk to you in the outros. <laughs> Alright, so this evening I have the pleasure of speaking with Nikki Kalan, the vocalist for Necrogoblicon. How are you doing this evening? Hey, Jonathan. I'm good. Uh, how are you doing? Doing excellent. I've uh, kind of actually really been looking forward to doing this chat with you tonight. Um, definitely kind of breaking into, for me anyway, a little bit of different territory musically. I uh, haven't really had many guests on in, in your vein of music, so was really looking forward to kind of uh, stepping a little outside of my, my comfort zone of sorts. Brad, what kind of music do you normally cover? I mean, it is typically metal and hardcore and stuff like that, but I would say, I mean, you're kind of getting into the sweet like spot. Where... What was that? <laughs> I said, like, like real metal. Uh, I mean, I always hate when people try to put, like, labels on shit, but, I mean, mm. you know, I would say I've not really talked to anyone that's in more of a technical metal-type band. Um you know, it was kind of interesting, like, you know, you guys in the band have always been one of those, like, sort of fringe bands for me where, like, I listen to them, but, like, I don't, I don't know, I tend to find, like, I'm in my, almost my mid-30s now where it's, like, you just kind of get stagnant, sort of, sometimes, where until someone puts something in front of you that you're kind of like, oh, yeah, there's that thing, and you That's just... super true. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, between, you know, listening to uh, your guys' newest album, uh, the new Chelsea Grin, getting ready to do something with uh, those guys in the near future and some other new stuff, like, right. I'm kind of just all over the place uh, the last couple of weeks, just kind of, like, musically. <laughs> and then it's kind of interesting trying to find, like, palate-cleansing music for me where I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back and listen to uh, some Imogene Heap now and uh, uh, go hey. back to some stuff like that where it's, like, a lot more mellow for me where I can kind of, like, okay, like, and now I'm going to go back to this, like, brutal assault on my ears for the next uh, two days. Yeah, right, right, and then cool off again. Yeah. <laughs> so and yeah, you know, good Anya, and then some some sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of funny. I think a lot of people would be, you know, a lot of people are always surprised when you, at least when they like see the different stuff I listen to, especially like some of the shirts, because now I just kind of, you know, again, I'm at that age where I don't really give a fuck anymore. So like, I have like, right. a Whitney Houston shirt that I've been wearing lately, and people are like, do you like Whitney Houston? I'm like, yeah, I really like Whitney Houston. Or, you know, I have, like, another Aaliyah shirt. Like, I need another one, but I have another Aaliyah shirt that I bought. 
And people are just like, do you uh, like any of this shit? And it's like, no, I really do. Like, go look through my record collection. You'll find a lot of this shit in there. <laughs> That's awesome. Wrapping it. Yeah. Um, so kind of speaking to the new album, Welcome to Bonkers, came out about uh, two months ago now, roughly. Right. And I have to say, looking back at some of the reviews and some of the interviews that the band has done since that thing came out, but mainly the reviews, it was very interesting just to see how... Uh, I mean, it was mostly positive, but the the ones you guys kept posting on your socials kind of made me laugh because it was very <laughs> funny that you guys kind of like would seemingly shine the spotlight the brightest on the ones that were like kind of like I don't get this, <laughs> and to uh, me it's fun. yeah it's just kind of interesting you know like this far into your band's career it's like why are people reviewing your record if they don't really know what you've been doing, and to me it's like this I, is. Uh... It's just as weird to see someone that kind of make like, you know, having being a, a album reviewer myself for some people, it's like, I'm not really going out of my way to review something that like I either don't know about or don't have any interest in because I tend to find that either the lack of knowledge on the thing comes through, or if you're not a fan, that's going to seep through too. And I think that's, that's disingenuous to do for an album review uh, for people who, you know, might take your word for something and be like, Oh, well, I'm not going to check out that record then. Yeah ridiculous that guy was so filled with hate like we just, <laughs> just couldn't have I mean, like a personal vendetta or something it's like what's going on man <laughs> well i mean this this far into your career do you find it kind of disheartening that i mean a quick google search would allow someone to you know kind of realize that i think you know musically and everything you take it seriously but it's very still in the banner uh, wa waving the flag of having fun and I, I don't understand how someone could listen to anything or see the online presence any of you have and not get that right away. Yeah, it was it was really interesting to, to see like this that guy's reactions to it because it's like you're just so far off with all this stuff. Like, oh, these guys, you know, in, in the spotlight. I'm like, I think you think Necrogalicon's a lot bigger than it is, dude. Like, <laughs> worse. You know what I mean? I also loved how he said that, uh, you know, bands who wish to choose to follow in your footsteps. And I'm like, oh, is there some path that this band has taken to get where they are that I'm just other than just relentless touring and, and just, you know, genuinely doing it the old fashioned way that I, I'm unaware of that uh, I can maybe piggyback off of some of their success? <laughs> oh, totally. It was amazing. It's like he thought, he's giving us way too much credit in there. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's been a good reaction, though. I, you know, people are are digging it and if if someone doesn't like fun that's kind of their thing so what can you do <laughs> It's it's uh it was fun in doing some of the research on on some of the interviews you specifically had done. I found an interview that you had done uh it seemed like about five or like maybe three or four months ago, and you were talking about how you yourself feel that metal as a whole is kind of a very limiting genre. And we're talking about some of the music that you just happen to write for yourself just to kind of get the creative juices going. And it kind of makes, right. kind of makes me wonder. You know, as we were just kind of saying, like, I'm someone who kind of falls all over the musical spectrum, but do you tend to find like, that when writing for Necrogoblicon that it, it actually is a challenge to you because it, it kind of – you have to kind of think a little bit differently than maybe you, you would want to with some of the music you just happen to, like, maybe create organically, if that makes sense? Yeah, it's sort of interesting. Um you know, when I first got into music making, it was like a pirated copy free loop 2002 or something. Mm -hmm. And that sort of, it was like making little trance songs and stuff like that. Um, then my buddy who um, I co-founded the band with, he was in into metal and stuff. And he would write songs in power tab and play guitar, but uh, I was more on keys. And so I just used the step sequencer approach like in free loops to, but I kind of like learned how to write that way through writing metal, like mm -hmm. for Necrogoblin. So it's, it's, it's weird. It's not actually really a challenge, but it's, it is a different mindset. If that makes sense. No, um, totally. Yeah. It's like, all right, got to make it, you know, it's gotta be goblin, but I don't want it to be stupid. Like I want to try and push the envelope of what goblin is, but there's still, it's still got to have a certain dementedness to it, but I think that just uh, resonates from within. So. And all these years of uh, putting out songs and EPs and albums and so forth, uh, how how do you still find the ways to keep it goblin and, and keep pushing the envelope in that? 
that's a good question. You know, uh, I think heavy metal is like a little less goblin, even though it was all about goblins. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the record before this one. And, uh, I think it just had a broader range of people writing on it. Actually, I know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think, yeah. But um, I'd say there's a few things that can make anything goblin. And doing like a kind of folk metal, bum up, bum up, bum up, bum up, bum up, bum up, that automatically like will make something goblin right away. And then there's a lot of like major seven stuff, like da da da, you know. Right. Just the intervals in the music. There's just little things like that. And I feel like as long as you follow uh, a few things like that, um, you can do whatever else you want. And it'll still feel Goblin. And then the vocals, which, which are, you know, people already associate that with Goblin. So I feel like no matter what I do, people are like, whoa, he sounds like a real Goblin. I'm like, do I? That, was never... <laughs> that wasn't the goal, but shit, all right. <laughs> it was kind of interesting listening to some of the uh, I'm trying to remember the actual track name off the top of my head, but there was one that kind of had a very uh, sort of like 8-bit, like old uh, oh, video track. game. Yeah, okay, yeah. I wanted to say that's what it was, but I was like, come on, I, I really don't want to say that and hope that it's that it isn't. And then you're like, why? Because it sounds like a fucking video game thing. It's It's got to be Dragons. <laughs> but uh, in listening to that, like, you know, I always think it's interesting. How how much uh, do you do you listen to a lot of, like, video game scores and stuff like that and kind of take inspiration for, for some stuff with that? Well, I mean, I play games more like Call of Duty kind of crap. Okay. Uh but in the 90s, I guess, I was really into, like, when I was a kid, into, like, LucasArts adventure games. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah. Secret of Monkey Island. And, oh, like, Indiana okay. Jones, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. So the music in those games, was I was probably, like, seven or eight playing those, you know, and it was just, like, that stuck in my head forever. Right. Um, so it definitely uh, influenced. But I think in terms of dragons, that specific thing came about because... I was sort of just going through patches, uh, which are like the sounds uh, in Logic, and there's a great one called Chiptune Lead that they had added with the recent patch at the time or something. Um, and then our the guy who's our new drummer, Eric, he makes Chiptune music, so he he's totally into that video game world. Okay. And so I guess jamming around on the on that sound really inspired the uh, the rest, you know. <laughs> I've kind of wondered too with, you know, kind of going back to the question that I asked a little bit ago about how you say that you don't, you know, how metal is kind of limiting or whatever. And, and I know that you say like you write a bunch of music. You, is there ever a potential to, to release any of this stuff or have you released any of this stuff just under maybe a different pseudo name or a, a pen name or something and have music out there? Like, or there's, is, go ahead. There's like little unfinished things. Like my problem is that it's really hard for me to like, finally or finalize something get it out the door before i lose interest uh because i don't have any deadlines or something and it's almost more like hobbyism but right. uh i would like i would love to put out an album that's been on my to-do list for like 11 years you know what I mean? <laughs> it was I think it'll happen in the older like you know i just turned 30 last year and it's like okay there's something that happens when that happens, and all of a sudden you're just kind of like, I need to be an adult now. I don't know what that means, but I feel like people that are 30 are yeah. smarter and, like, hat shit together. And then you realize, like, when you're kind of, like, hit that age or, like, at my age now, like, getting ready to turn 34, and you're like, man, my parents were, like, 10 years older than I am now, and I thought they knew everything. Uh, they didn't know uh, fucking shit. They were making everything up and just being like, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, just remembering moments from childhood and like being like, "Whoa, that, that my dad was like my age at that time or something." Yeah, it's so yeah. weird. It's very interesting when you <laughs> just kind of look back on it. And you're like, "Man, my parents didn't know shit about anything." Right. Well, I mean, maybe they did, but I mean, that, yeah. like, you think they know like everything, but then you're this age and you're like, "Holy shit, I'm basically the same as I was when I was a kid." You know? Yeah, that's very, <laughs> that's very interesting. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Kind of speaking of being a forever child, I don't know if this is a great segue, but working with Jason Sukoff, I mean, what was that? How great is that? That always seems like a dude that just would be a fun guy just to sit around and, and work with. Oh, man, it's true. He's he's hilarious. He's just like a nonstop joke machine. Uh, 
Um, and I spent like three months as house last year in Florida, uh, which was cool. I, you know, flew out there and a lot of hangs, you know, we did, we did a lot of work, but also a lot of hangs. And, um, you know, he's a really good dude and we've become pretty good friends through that. So I think uh, when, uh, when listening yeah. to the music and seeing that Jason produced produced the record, I was like, of course he did. This kind of has like a little bit of a – like the dude who – like you can't have the dude who did Crop Duster or Cross Duster and be yeah. like, okay, like he's not going to work on something like this. Like it just fits. So – Yeah, the- it's pretty funny. Yeah, how it all came to be because I like listened to Big Fat Box of Shit back in the day a bunch and I didn't know it was who he was or anything like that. And then it was kind of one of the inspirations of Necro in the very beginning. <laughs> Put a little mammal sauce just, on it. So out there, you know, and then, yeah, mammal sauce and stuff, exactly. <laughs> I feel really weird yeah. when, like, if you aren't of a certain, like, if you've never heard any of that and you play it for people, either the reaction is, like, horrified, like, what the fuck is this? Or it's very, <laughs> like, yes, I haven't heard this in a long time, but, like, I think we just became best friends. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those amazing songs. <laughs> so, you know, Warp Tour is what I think two weeks away at this point. Yeah, just about two weeks, probably fifteen days or something. It's June twenty second, so I don't know what day it is. It's, it's some day. Today is the seventh, so uh, yeah, that's about two weeks. Yeah, yeah. So, how excited are uh, you to do Warp Tour? I, I feel like the last handful of years, Warp's done really good at kind of having a band of your ilk, whether it be the Guars or I think maybe even Ghost was, or not Ghost, I'm sorry, Ghoul, I think was on it a couple of years before that. So it seems like they've kind of carried this weird tradition of having kind of like a a band of your ilk on the tour that, you know, I think a lot of people who are in the know are, are excited to see you guys on such a tour, but I think it. I'm more looking forward to seeing the random passerbys just kind of being like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Me too. I'm really excited about that aspect of it. Like, just playing for all these people who have no idea about uh, Necro at all or anything. They're just going to be walking by at some festival. They're like 16 or something. They just see this goblin on the stage. Like, we have to see (laughs) (laughs) Kind of speaking to John, do you... You know, I've often wondered, I mean, like, he's such a a big presence for you guys, like, being like a mascot for the band and kind of like, I guess, an unofficial face of the band as well. Do you right. find that, like, how did that really come about? Because, I mean, a lot of times that kind of gimmick either ends up, you know, being a detriment to the band and people don't take them seriously or it becomes a really beloved thing. Like, I mean, I always thought it was kind of weird how the Prodigy had an interpretive dancer, basically, that <laughs> oh, yeah. that everybody loved. And it was like, but this dude doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Yeah, that, but he's like yeah, a, he was I, like the hype man of that band, and so it's like you know I think that's kind of the role that John fills, and you know there's there's not many bands that you know, especially in a touring band where you know you're trying to make as money stretch as far as you can, like where you would have like your mascot come out with you during the shows. It's it would usually be like a yeah he's he's in the videos and so forth, but yeah, it's really weird. It just kind of happened organically <laughs> over time. You know? Like we started out probably playing live shows in like 2007. And then, you know, it was just us. And we were, people since day one were always like, you guys should dress as goblins, you know? And <laughs> we were always like, you know what, fuck that. It's like, we're about goblins. We're not trying to be, like, dressed as goblins and shit, you know? Right. Because, fuck that. We're just these dudes. We're playing music. And, I don't know. We didn't want to, like, go there with it. Um, but then after the music video first came out for No One Survives in 2012, like, five years later uh we did like one show we were playing a lot of local shows at that time i like the whiskey a go-go in mm-hmm. la and um we did a show like in the flyer or whatever it's like featuring the no one survives goblin like he didn't have his name <laughs> yet or anything <laughs> and, uh, and yeah it was like a big success and it was just so ridiculous and the crowd got super pumped up and it was like fuck i guess <laughs> we're gonna just do this now so. what are um, uh yeah and it's just a really absurd concept that people enjoy and you know metal's like an absurd genre yes and it's like it's not you know we're obviously yeah we like to try and make the music as good as we can but it's 
metal is ridiculous. Come on, you know? <laughs> well, you don't like standing up there and posturing as a tough dude for like three and a half minutes yeah. at a time? All right, so it's the fucking circle pit. Kind of crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh... But the goblin going even more, so it's like a perfect compromise. Yeah. It was kind of funny, as you were saying, like, you know, some people were... Did you find that a lot of people, when they see the band name and or because of John, do, do they... Do inherently a lot of people come out and expect you to all be dressed as goblins as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's definitely at least a couple people for show that come up to me after like I thought that like you were the goblin or something. <laughs> and like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You guys just did the uh, a plushie of John actually, which I thought was kind of interesting. Is it fun coming up with things to to revolve around him? Yeah, it is actually a lot of fun. Like. I've been wanting to do like souvenirs and weird tacky merch for a long time, <laughs> and we're got like a lot more of that shit for warps. We have like Necrogoblicon, like green sunglasses. We got all this crap, you know. I'm really excited. That's awesome. Like, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's pretty fun to like be able to like. We got the dolls custom made, at, like some shop in Japan or something. <laughs> but, I, that seems like the appropriate place to get that made. <laughs> Yeah, it's super Japanese for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh what's one of the more fun things that if you guys can make it happen in a financially responsible way, what's one of the more like outrageous ideas for a like a John Necrogoblicon like uh piece of merch or whatever that you would like to make? Okay. Well, I've always had this like it's not merch, but like imagine if you had like like lots and lots of different goblins, right? Uh-huh. All on once. And then you, like, the, the fake dream I have is, like, we have a residency in Vegas, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the whole show is, like, optical illusions and stuff. And then you have, like, two goblins trapezing from other sides of the stage, like, towards each other. <laughs> You've got, like, five goblins playing steel drums and stuff in the back you know this just sounds like, like a hybrid of like gremlins 2 at the very end when they've taken over that building and like yeah. what could be gremlins 3 <laughs> <laughs> yeah just go all the way with it I, I thought like one idea this is different but still it's in the in the residency in vegas phase be like have shoes that are like secretly you press a button and then all of a sudden they like start rolling you know so you just start rolling <laughs> like Maybe like ball bearings inside the shoe, and you press a button, and like a plate comes down, and they come out through the hole or whatever. So then the whole time I would just be making this like motion, so it looks like I, no one knows it's gonna happen though, you know, just like <laughs> lunging forward. And then at one point I just like press the button, and then I just start sliding along the stage, and people are just like, "What the fuck is happening?" You know, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. always that's a lot. Of that. <laughs> um. We always want to do, like, T-shirt cannons. We still haven't gotten to it, but, like, we're really trying to make it happen for Warp, so he's out there, like, firing a cannon at people and stuff. You know, you know there's always someone that's got one of those, so you just got to be friends with somebody and then go get one and borrow it. Ah, uh, good idea. I didn't think of that. Yeah. I mean, that way you're not using your own money. <laughs> right. You make one. It's like, kind of like a spud gun, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or you just get, like, those big-ass, uh, what are those, like, those slingshot things, like, where you have two people hold it, and then you just fucking, like, launch them out. Uh, water balloon launcher. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Just do yeah, that. that could be fun. Yeah, like, yeah. I thought it would be cool if you had, like, a nemesis that was a red goblin, you know? It'd be, like, <laughs> goblin forest. <laughs> you should yeah. cause fake beef beef with another band, and, and that's how your, your beefing is with their red goblin. Yeah, you guys obviously took the goblin from us. Come on. <laughs> um, speaking of Warp Tour, I mean, I've gone the last handful of years now, and I always feel old. But thankfully, they have like older bands on there now that don't make me feel like such a pedophile. Um, yeah. <laughs> but with all that said, sure. like you know, it's 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 a grueling tour, and I uh, I'm always kind of shocked at uh, how you know that band. I, I think this is going to be your first time doing the tour, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's it's the longest tour we've ever done too. So it's I'm definitely kind of scary, but it'll be fun. I uh, I always wonder, like going into it, are you guys like intimidated, like by just the the constant never knowing when you're playing, it being outdoors and it's hot as fuck, and then just all the other perils of being on the road for that long. Yeah, 
I, I love sitting around at home, like with my wife and stuff, but touring is fun. You just gotta just, it's kind of like just total escapism, you know? And as long as you embrace it, you're good. I feel like it's like, you definitely get homesick at times, but you know, with iPhones and stuff, it's not so bad. Right. And, okay. and I'm sort of excited about the random show times because eh, it's something new. I guess, yeah, you know, kind of sucks, but it's, it keeps it interesting too. I feel like, or I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll have to ask you uh, when you are the first band playing at like ten or eleven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, after yeah, hungover. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, who are you most looking uh, forward to seeing on this warp tour? Well, honestly, I haven't heard of like ninety percent of the bands, so I'm excited just to like see what they are. Um. But there's a band called Bowling for Soup on there for ten days. I'm a big fan of them. They're like pop punk. Yeah, I, yeah, I've been. I remember when they uh, were pretty big when I was still in high school, which makes me now feel totally. Really <laughs> no, like girl, all the bad guys want. Yeah, them. yeah sophomore year for me or something. So. But yeah, uh, but they're sweet, and I'm really stoked to see them because you know they always seem like cool dudes, and they. I was into their music when I was a kid, so I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, and some of the, you know, we'll see. It. You know, there's, like, there's some band called Make Out. I'm like, really? But okay, yeah, we'll see. Maybe they're the coolest dudes, you know? <laughs> yeah, you never, never know. know. Yeah, you never know. It's always funny, too, because, like, see, like uh, the thing I've always liked to watch Warp Tour with some of the people I know that are on it or have been doing it, uh, you know, they always are like, yeah, you know, I didn't think I'd like this person, but uh, they're pretty sweet. And then they asked me if I wanted to go on tour <laughs> to do insert whatever for them. And it's like, oh, it's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> just seeing what sort of like weird clicks are going to arise among people. Yeah. It, I mean, oh, like they God, say, it's pretty, like the ultimate summer pretty. camp. So, I mean, that's pretty much what summer camp was. Yeah. For sure. It's just like a really long summer camp. It's going to be weird. Kind of in, in, in wrapping this up so I can get you out of here. Um, do you have any more Goblin-themed cover songs in the works at all? Mm. Not really. We're, we're like, constantly talking about, oh, we need to do a cover again. We need to make some covers, but we never really do it. But we will, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's a dream for sure. Uh, what were we talking about recently? Uh, I was trying to do like some '90s stuff, like you know that placebo, every you and every me. Yeah. Or thinking about covering that, or maybe like a Fat Boy Slim song, or just something weird, you know. No, you don't want to do uh, Protege Ma. <laughs> mm. <laughs> then that way you can also do it in another language on top of it. Yeah, just go full out. Be like, we can just make up a Goblin language or something, and be like, yeah, these lyrics are like some of the most beautiful lyrics ever written, but you have to read in goblin to understand it you know i think you should just do like a really fun like because it's totally in the same vein that you should do like an old school turbo negro song and just have fun with that yeah there's an idea that'd be sick uh, i'll get our shit together someday <laughs> plenty of time to do it maybe that's what you'll do on warp tour if you end up getting bored you'll just work on cover songs yeah, I feel like you know you play at eleven a.m. and then you're like, all right, now I have a whole day. I can only look at like the sponsor booth. It's probably to be interesting for like a week, you know. And then there's six more. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you guys have coming up after Warp Tour and, and the rest of this year? Is there other touring announced or? There's nothing announced. We're probably probably going to end up doing a like a. Somewhere in the September through November range, like, but like for a month, the like U.S. is my guess. But we'll do Europe if we get the opportunity, just because it's fun, you know. Right. Well, I would assume um, I haven't been to Europe yet, but I'll take your word for it. Looks like fun. It, it's cool. It's just fun to have like little moments of culture shock. I mean, you get more homesick, but it's like you get to do all this weird stuff and try weird food and drinks. You know, talk to people who don't speak English. Pretty fun. I think my favorite thing of having friends who tour is always hearing about how, uh, uh, is it the yeah the Russians I believe who always basically give you backhanded compliments. Oh, we've never played in Russia, but I'd imagine that yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're always like, oh, uh, you mu last time you were much skinnier. Uh, your tone, your guitar <laughs> tone was not so good. Uh, 
blah blah blah. Do you have yeah. this shirt in a size right. M? Uh, I don't like that. But uh, if you have that shirt in a completely different gra- <laughs> like a different color shirt, and it's like, no, that's what I have. <laughs> but it's yeah. always like they're just so well, brutally honest that it's like, oh, it's so refreshing. You get to watch, but... That's funny shit, man. Like, I hope we get to play there. That'd be that'd be a <laughs> trip. For... Uh, I like I... it in Germany. Like, never understood what I was saying. Like, uh, in my banter, I would make a lot of like dry humor like sarcastic <laughs> stuff and they just have like no idea what i'm saying it's like go out there and just say something like hey whatever you know and then no one laughs and it's just like total silence and it's like oh god it's all so these weird. people are watching but then as soon as you pump your fist they all start doing it in unison it's like hmm i think one of the weirdest things i've ever seen and like i get it because it's the culture but it's always weird to me is like when you see stuff from like Japan or whatever, and like they're kind of going crazy within the confines of like the the song you're currently playing, and they're like getting into it. But as soon as you're done, like the crowd just stands there, and they'll quickly clap and then like stop oh, yeah. and wait wait for the next thing to happen. And you're just like, oh god, that's that's very weird. <laughs> and have been respectful in some yes. weird way. Yeah, yeah and it, it's just very it's very interesting like when I see like hear those stories or like when I see videos of stuff over there and it's like god I feel like that would just be so weird like it'd be like can I have the politest <laughs> wall of death please like you go over there you go over there like maybe bow at each other and then uh do your clap thing and and <laughs> when we cut in you're going to run at each other okay Yeah totally <laughs> totally buying into the into the illusion and just enjoying it for like not seeing it as ironic at all Yeah <laughs> I feel like when you see stuff like that, it definitely makes you kind of realize how, like you were saying earlier, like how not metal metal can be sometimes. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funny with like the J-pop culture over there. Like, yeah, I've definitely listened to some J-pop and watched like videos of huge concerts. And it's like the thing. They'll do the same thing at that show as they would at like a metal show, it seems. <laughs> oh, it's like that one guy. What is his name? Vitus? That dude's That dude weirds me out. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like I always love like the metal things where they throw it over there, and you're just like, okay, like I don't know, I don't know how I don't know how the lady from Fifth Element turned into like a, a concert going thing. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like the weirdest thing I think I've ever watched. Where I was like, right, this is kind of totally. tight. Is, uh, is like Yanni, but like still, I'm not I'm not really watching a whole lot of Yanni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like a couple good Yanni songs, you know, and the rest. Well, whatever, yeah. whatever ones you can beat your wife to, those are the good Yanni songs. That's where the inspiration really was coming through. <laughs> I know Yanni's good wife in music, you know? Uh, I mean, that new Leslie Dying uh, song leaked today for about three hours. That was interesting. Yeah, did you listen to that? I did. Uh, I'm one of the... F- I don't think I'm in the... Ma- I don't know if I'm in the majority or the minority on this because it seems like there's there's equally people on either side of the fence. Like, uh, I think it was Metal Injection posted a thing like, this is the last Asley Dying story we're ever going to... Any time we're ever going to mention this band ever again. And they went on this like whole moral high ground about you know the whole thing and how they're not supporting Tim and, and all this kind of shit. And... You know, there's a victim in, involved in all this, which I totally understand. But, you know, like I had this thought today, even before this, just because a lot of this is, you know, so omnipresent, uh, you know, with the Morgan Freeman thing and the Bill Cosby thing and the Roseanne and just right. everything that's been happening. And, you know, it, it's weird that it's like we can't seemingly separate a person from a thing they do. Like, you know, like I was making the comment and thinking about this today where I was like, you know, Bill Cosby did these jokes like 30, 40 years ago. Those jokes still aren't funny because of something we found out about him 40 years later. Like that's kind of fucked up. Like not yeah, ever, like right. people, people aren't always great. Like there's something fucked up about all of us or we've all done shitty things. So like, should we have that one thing to find who we are? Granted, I understand these are gross, <laughs> heinous things that these people have done, but it's like, it shouldn't, at what point do we kind of look at it and negate everything that came before just because of something that came after? And it's just this weird thing weird, yeah. that I don't, I don't know. Like I kind of been getting wrapped up in this whole, like, do we build up all these people just to, so we can tear them down and be like, Oh, look at this fucked up thing they did. Like, and, and I'm better than right. that person. Like, is it that, or what is it? I think part of it probably is like tendency to idolize and to like view some of these people sometimes as role models. And you know, yeah, like I guess, for someone looking at, you know, Bill Cosby or something, they might see him and secretly everyone's jealous of like some celebrity like that. Right. 
And then when he gets in trouble, everyone's like, oh, gotcha, fucker, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and, I think... You know, the weird, definitely idolization comes into it because then they're like, you know, feeling betrayed or whatever, even if they don't know this person directly. It, uh, it sucks and stupid, but I guess anonymity is the only way to prevent it. We we can't have that anymore. <laughs> no, gone. <laughs> Um, so I always like to end these episodes, uh, where I have you plug your socials, where people can find you online and then, uh, have you pick a song to end the episode out to can be anything. doesn't have to be anything of yours specifically. Okay. Uh, sweet. So, uh, right on. Yeah. I'm Nikki from Necker Goblicon. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Just Google it. N E K R O G O B L I K O N. <laughs> Um, and this is Enya with Only Time. What is it about this song that you really like? Because I, I do kind of get into these weird rabbit holes of Enya. <laughs> I love the, uh, the soothing nature of it, and it sort of has this Celtic vibe to it, which I appreciate being half Irish. Awesome. Well, Nikki, thank you again for your time, and uh, see you out at Warp Tour. Sweet deal, man. Come say hi, and uh, yeah, we'll hang. Awesome. Have a good night. All right, you too. Bye-bye. So that was my chat with Nikki from Necrogoblicon. Uh, really enjoyed that it went kind of all over the place. And, you know, sometimes I think those are really the best kind of conversations to have. Uh, no real – you just kind of meander through a conversation, and then, you know, 35 minutes later, you're like, wow, I'm on the, the other side of this. Um, it was really cool, though, to kind of to talk to him about all the various merch ideas of where they wanted to go uh, with John Necrogoblicon. Uh, yeah. If money wasn't an option – or if money wasn't an issue, like what they would like to do. Um, I think the, uh, the t-shirt cannon idea, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, yeah. so I'm interested to, when I go to warp tour on Sunday, Saturday, uh, I'm interested to see if any of the things that he was talking about ended up making their way into, uh, their warp tour set. Is he quite possibly the most chill dude you've talked to on the podcast? I think so. Like I, maybe Scott, maybe Skyler from he is legend might've been more chill, but yeah, that's, that was pretty close, you know, like, uh, it, it was so, so relaxed and like, almost like you almost don't even get the impression that like, it's is it a like, metal band? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was very much like, Whoa. Okay. I think like with this, with this chat in particular, I just liked, um, with a band that is just like, so associated with, um, the, the spokes guy, you know, the mascot and the, you know, the ridiculousness of, of a lot of it. Like you guys were a lot of fun, but I appreciated that you guys actually talked about, you know, real stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that, well, that was, that was my biggest takeaway from it because I was like, you know, if this is all just silly, I don't know if it's going to be interesting, you know? Well, and that's kind of the thing too. And something I try to, to do with these interviews. And I, and I think, you know, and I have now teased it over the last two episodes, but I think this is, you know, the episode I did with, uh, Blothar that's coming out next, next week, Man, I I know this sounds really fucking tacky. I'm really proud of that episode. I'm really excited to have people hear it. I'm really interested to to see what people's reactions to it are because it's not like I could have done the same thing with with Nikki in this episode and, and kind of focused on the visuals and the over the top you know nature of everything and oh Necrogoblicon and do you ever feel like you're pigeonholing yourself into you know having to write songs specifically and I, I kind of asked that but in a way nicer way right but you know the fact that like you said this was just a conversation where we kind of talked about a few other things and how it relates to the band in a serious manner as opposed to you know not like almost going so far into what the band is and their their gimmick of sorts that you're you're not seeing it for what it really is right i mean yeah and i think i think they did really i think they do a really good job of kind of portraying themselves as guys that like to have a good time but at definitely. the same time at the same time you know like i like i liked what you know whenever we originally had him on you know the idea was you know is this do, do they always want to be funny or it's one of those like we take the image and the, the the fun of the band seriously but we also take the music side of it really seriously yeah, and there's a lot of really cool stuff like i liked i liked when listening to their discography uh i uh <laughs> over the years not in a concentrated week for a podcast but um <laughs> Oh, throughout time since I've been familiar with the band, I liked that they had covers and you could very clearly see what their influences were, you know, 
uh, like early in flames. Like they, they recorded a cover of uh, in flames artifacts of the black rain and just called it goblins of the back black rain, because of course they did, you know, and, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I liked seeing them grow musically. And so when I heard that review that you read, I was just like, dude, you know, like you gotta, you gotta put some of this stuff in context, you know, and, and see where the band's coming from. And I, what I like about them is that, you know, a lot of people listen to death metal because they're angry or because they just like, you know, the extremity or whatever, how serious it all takes itself. But like, what I like is that with Necrogoblicon, it's kind of a, um, they're, they're not making fun of the music that they're playing, but it, it's definitely fun to be able to laugh while, cause I mean, I, I still consider them to be more serious than like a death clock. Right. You know, where, you know, that's obviously a band that just had death clocks interesting in that they're actually very musically great, yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, it's obviously, you know, there for a laugh and I don't necessarily think Necrogoblicon's music is there for a laugh. Right. As much as it's like, hey, we just want to have a good time. I know it's I basically just said the same thing twice, one short, one long. But <laughs> um, but I just can't stress that enough. And I think that this talk is, is fun because I think a lot of other interviewers probably weren't going to approach it like you did. Maybe. I you don't know. know. So, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes I wonder if me trying to come from something from a different perspective than everybody else is, is a good thing or not. I genuinely do think I ask questions that are kind of off the beaten path or if they are somewhat similar to what someone's asked it's more so i can set up a different question so i can at least be like okay so yeah there's that and then now let's go over here um but i don't yeah, know for sure yeah no like I, I i get what you're saying and that's uh that's part of the reason why i you know don't consider myself to be that that um skilled of an interviewer because i'm just so nervous about what you just described that i just almost don't even interview at all <laughs> you know and just like i'll just talk for a long time long-winded sometimes i repeat myself but i just i like having a very casual conversation with somebody even if there's somebody that maybe i look up to or whatever it's just a kind of a defense mechanism from getting nervous or being afraid that you're going to upset someone or or, or whatever. <laughs> but uh, Necrogoblicon, uh, they are currently on Warp Tour right now. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing them. Like I said, I'm going to go see them on Saturday in Chicago. Uh, hopefully, maybe I can uh, see Nikki and maybe get a photo for the podcast to, to also go up on the socials. And uh, that's a great way to plug the socials. If you would like to follow Necrogoblicon, you can find them on Facebook and Twitter simply at Necrogoblicon. And you can find them on Instagram at Necrogoblicon Official. Highly recommend the Right Now with John Goblicon uh, episodes on YouTube. Uh, they had Keith Buckley from Every Time I Die, so you know I'm going to love that one. And they just had the used uh, pop up, and that was really good. And they also had uh, Wednesday 13 on uh, the couple episodes a while ago. And if you would like to follow our show sponsor, The Bean Bastard, you can find them at thebeanbastard.com for all your coffee purchasing needs. And you can find them on Facebook and Instagram at The Bean Bastard. You can find our partners over at Moshpit Nation at moshpitnation.com. Find them on Facebook at Moshpit Nation West Capital MI. Twitter and Instagram are simply Moshpit Nation. And Dan, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Discuss Metal Dan, and uh, you can find my other podcast at DiscussMetal.com. And then we always like to have people rate, review, and subscribe. So, Dan, can you uh, tell us a little bit about that and why it's important? Sure. Uh, we love getting reviews, uh, not, not to just inflate our own ego, although that is a wonderful side effect. Um, no, we just like to hear from you guys. It, it lets us know that you're listening when you leave a review. Um, or, you know, you send us a message or, or anything, uh, interaction is everything. And the good thing about us, our stuff getting good interaction is that we will then get recommended to people that may also like us. And that includes your friends and people that you think would be into the podcast. Um, everything runs on algorithms these days. So the more recommendations we get from you guys, the more recommendations we'll get to other, will be sent to other people, other listeners. So. Um, we really appreciate um, all of you guys and the reviews that you left so far. You can leave us a review on uh, iTunes. Yes. Or Apple Podcast, as the kids call it now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can also leave – we can leave reviews on Facebook, right? Yeah, you can. I, I've Absolutely. Never, I've never seen one personally, but I guess Aww. you can. Okay, then we, we really – somebody out there needs to give, give John's Untitled Podcast a Facebook review. 
I've now it's heard a that. starred re- yeah it's a starred review five stars preferred um, but if there's something that we're doing that uh, annoys you, uh, also let us know, and we will do our best to not annoy you, unless it's really funny. Right, unless it's like the uh, the Necrogoblicon interview or review, then we'll definitely read that as well. Right. Yeah, I uh, and a big thing before I plug all my socials, which I'll do that right now. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Johnson Title Podcast. Tweet at me, and this is going to be important at Johnson Title Pod. Uh, in as of the tape this is going to come out on wednesday in a week and a half on july 20 july 28th so that is my deadline july 28th ice t is coming through to perform a solo set of his rap stuff uh with ice cube and uh basically the other half of nwa that's not easy e and not dr dre and uh <laughs> so um if you follow me on Twitter, you will have seen that since the beginning of this year, I have been trying to get Ice-T on the podcast. Uh, as I think I said last uh, episode, he likes all the tweets pretty quickly. Uh, he's even responded to one, literally one. And uh, so I'm trying to do a grassroots approach. I want people to tweet at Ice-T. It's at final level. Uh, so at final level, all one word. Uh, so tweet at him. Tag me in it at Johnson Title Pod. Let's try to get Ice T on this fucking podcast, even if only for five minutes. He's literally going to be in my town. If there's ever an opportunity for this to happen, this is it. I don't ask anyone for anything. Not yet. Patreon's not co- not up yet. It's coming. Uh, but consider this like the million dollar Patreon payout of sorts. I want Ice T so fucking bad, and not the drink. I want Ice T. To come on this podcast, bless the podcast for five fucking minutes. Please go on Twitter at Final Level at Johnson Title Pod. Let him know that you want to hear him on this podcast. Re- I'm going to be tweeting at him intermittently because I don't want to bother him myself. But every retweet, every comment, every everything will help. So please, that is my impassioned plea for the week. And it will be until this show to make this happen. Help Ice me. Ice T on JUP. <laughs> yep. That is that is the hashtag. Ice T on JUP. And without further ado, we end these episodes as we always do with a song. And as you heard, <laughs> Nikki's ended out. Uh, we are playing out to Enya's Only Time, which uh, every time I hear it, I just laugh because it's, it's usually used ironically in, in comedies. And uh, I blame them. So. Yep. We are going to end this with Enya, and we will talk to you next week when we come back with Blothar from Guar. Can't wait for that.